Betfair trading and price swing is about being strategic and logical. You must let profits grow when they can and close a position when the situation changes. So here's an example that banks £64. So we're starting a bit further out here than usual, so I can explain that a bit better. You'll understand the key timings for a swing if you've seen the three biggest swing trading mistakes video on this channel. So check that out at the end if you haven't. Now I'm going to go around the screen here and explain everything as we go, um, but I appreciate that sometimes the flashing numbers is a little bit boring, so I'm going to speed up the recording a little bit uh, just to make it that bit more interesting. So we've opened a position here on uh, Dazzling Star, and I'm just checking the live shows outside of the exchange um, for the prices on course and also at the Racing Post, just to marry up some different information here because I have a belief that uh, Dazzling Star is likely to shorten in price. So I'm looking to confirm that I've got my position open. Now the reason I've done that is obviously you can see historically the price has contracted significantly on Dazzling Star. Um, and when we go back to the trading software in a second, you'll see the charts along the bottom for the traded volumes. Now this is the live show here on Sporting Life. So just refreshing the screen, you can see it's gone 9 to 2, 4 to 1, and it's currently at four to one although historically on the racing post it was previously up at six to one so looking at the screen here um, this is our run-up on the second ladder dazzling star we've opened a position at 5.8 which is not always the best position to be opening in the market because of the tick increments would we'll explain that elsewhere um, but here it does look like there's you know a, a very good chance that this move is going to continue there's several reasons for that so looking at the betfair chart along the bottom you can see the historical traded volumes is coming from a price of about 9.0 initially this morning um, it's been quite steady in doing that and there's been um, traded volume coming for it in one direction obviously pushing the price down and that price is that uh, and that that volume is actually can continuing as as the recording started so keep an eye on those traded volume bars over on the right there you can see the dark bars are money falling into the market in the last uh, 30 seconds or so so i'm just highlighting that with my mouse there now aside from that obviously we've got to look at the entire market because you know all prices affect each other when something goes down something else has to go up they can't all contract um, unless you're a bookmaker of course <laughs> so uh, looking at the favorite Yes, there's been some support, um, although there's not really a huge amount of traded volume to back it. That is the threat at this point in time, which could stop or slow down Dazzling Star from contracting if it continues to take money. And that is obviously the primary thing we want to focus on. Aside from that, the third runner is quite weak, and so is the fourth. So I've looked through all these charts just before I started the recording and obviously opened the position. But I'm getting in nice and early because normally I wouldn't get involved this early and that could actually be a real big problem for swing trading and particularly scalping, um, trading too early and opening up a position. But I'm doing it here with a view that the price is going to move longer term and there is enough volume in the market to be doing this. So you can see at the moment there's you know just shy of 300 grand matched and we're just about 6.30 out from the start. So... There's plenty of time for this move to develop and there's money for me to get out against so I can mitigate my risk, I can minimise my downside and I can dump my position without too much of a problem um, if needs be and the price should go back against me. That's not something that we're always afforded in the lower liquidity situations such as places like Dundalk or Wolverhampton. So I'm just going to check in on the live coverage to see if they've gone down to the start yet. You can see it's starting to be covered there although um, it's not peak activity. And at this point, now we've got the trade open, the main question that I'm asking myself consistently is, you know, is this going to go against us? Has anything changed in this situation? Do I still believe it to be true? And as soon as the answer to those questions is that something has changed or something feels a bit off, a bit right, I want to look at exiting that position or at least phasing out first if I'm slightly unsure. In this instance, it looks like, you know, everything's on. Nothing's challenging just yet right now. Um, looking at those traded volumes on the first, third and fourth runners, um, it just looks like everything in the market it's quite weak um, and activity is actually picking up so outside of the market again just quickly refreshing the prices down at the um, the course just to see if the bookie's going to dump any liability elsewhere uh, and again refreshing so it's that constant process of analyzing and adjusting and going round in a loop um, feedback loop just to make sure that we're doing the right thing and that nothing has changed being completely honest with ourselves about the situation not getting carried away in our thoughts about how much money we may or may not make so the market's going to pick up a little bit in just a second as 
um, activity comes into the market as it always does again that's covered elsewhere in other videos and uh, there'll be one at the end of this video that you can check out for the the points in which um, it's worth focusing on in terms of time but right now pretty much everything that I wanted to see is confirming here um, the first favorite is in, you know in the left hand column there is the one that could potentially slow this down at this point in time so I'm just being very aware of that you can see I'm hovering over the ladders there looking at you know if I need to I can quickly dump my position and again reassessing consistently going around in that feedback loop that's the most important thing that you can do now I've not overstated at this point in time you know some people will be looking at this going why don't you stake more because you know if it comes in you can make a, a fortune but it's all about managing the downside and managing your risk. I don't want to be overexposed. To be on for 350 quid right now is absolutely fine because you can see looking at those few prices above, there's unmatched money in the market available to um, you know that, that can match 350 quid. So it's a case of letting this play out, which is also one of the biggest things that people struggle with when it comes to swing trading and Betfair trading because you've got to let the profits run and close the losses short. Um, yeah, it's very cliche, it's cliche for a reason, um, but you've actually got to let it happen. So it means sitting on your hands sometimes for a few minutes, letting things play out. Um, but I'm just looking for a reason to get out of this, to be honest, I'm not even thinking about profit. Um, and you can see I've just highlighted the traded volumes on the right of the column there, there's more money falling into the market. And everything that I believe to be true at this point in time is actually happening. So it's a question of if, when and how far the price is likely to move in our favour. Um, again, managing the downside. I wouldn't be on for this size stake, or I wouldn't have been on for that size stake slightly so early on, uh, slightly so early on if it was a lower liquidity race. But obviously, we're, you know, this is Ascot as well. Um, it's a group race, so things are a bit better than usual. So it's a case of letting it play out, um, observing and analysing, and hopefully things should just pick up in a second here as we get that more liquidity. The last race is obviously stopping being covered on TV. And as the last race stops being covered, oh, there's a little bit of money just popped in the market there. Now that's actually good because although the price bounced against us, that's confirmed what I thought, you know, a big chunk of money came in in the market there. You can see on the orange chart over on the market overview on the left, which made prices spike back out. But even though they spiked back out, the, the one that we believe to be being back didn't spike out much um, as a result of that. So, you know, so the resistance has sort of proved in the market. Now, things have just gone haywire. As I was saying, um, the volumes are going to come just then. That It's literally all just happened at once in a matter of seconds. You may want to replay that last 10, 20 seconds there. Um, but the price is shot in, um, and so I've started to offset my position because I'm also extremely aware that we're close to the start. You see me looking at the live video there just quickly. Um, we're close to the start, and we don't want to get overexposed or caught out right at the start. But that money has come, um, and all of the things that I believed at the start of the recording have effectively just come true. So I've locked in profit for £64.89 pence there on that one trade. Um, we've got less than a minute they're loading into the stalls down at the start now obviously i don't really want to be getting involved in the market too much now unless i was putting a few late scalps through the market but i think in this situation there's not a huge amount um that i'll be doing there and the race is about to go off so there you have it successful trade 64 quid so subscribe to the channel for more betfair trading help and check out the three biggest mistakes that betfair traders make swing trading they catch so many traders out 